action. Welcome to a day in the life. This is gonna be a keto day in the life. Those of you that watch my channel know that I typically do keto, intermittent fasting, and a little bit of paleo, I switch it all up. Today is a keto day. So I've been up for about a half an hour, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of my morning routine. Now one thing, straight up, I lay my clothes out before I go to bed. Why do I do that? Because I always need that reminder, right when I wake up, that is what I'm doing. Getting up, going to the gym, whether it's gonna be the garage, whether it's gonna be my office gym. Today I'm in Southern California, so we're going to be going to the studio gym. So we're gonna do that as soon as we get a little bit of coffee, have our apple cider vinegar, and do our little magic. I'm not afraid of tap water. Depends on where you live. So here, I've got just a few ounces of water. Combine that, it's a fresh new bottle. About two tablespoons apple cider vinegar. What this does, it gets me a little bit deeper in a fasted state, which I talk about in my videos all the time. What I mean by that is it activates what's called AMPK. So it kind of gets my body, uh, flips a switch. So my body feels like it's using its stored, actually is using its stored energy because that AMPK phosphorylation has happened. And this is the part that gets a lot of people. I just put a tiny dash of cayenne. You don't need much. Quarter teaspoon, something like that, you know, there, just enough like that. Maybe a tiny bit more. It's got a kick. But this has some pretty powerful thermogenic properties, especially if you're feeling a little bit wonky in the morning, this kicks it right up. There's some stuff called capsaicin in there, which actually does activate some pretty powerful processes in the body as far as thermogenesis goes. So you can look at seeing like a two to 4% increase in your core metabolic rate just because you're having this. I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but hey, it's a kick in the teeth, right? If you have a straw, use a straw. minute. Well, there's family. <laughs> they finally left his house. <laughs> For those of you that are wondering where my wife and my kids are. And who's that? Thomas Emma. Good job. I'm down here filming this specifically. I had to film a bunch of content down in Southern California. Uh, I had to just take care of a bunch of business. So I figured this is a perfect time to film a more consolidated and a more just day in the life of Thomas, okay? Not necessarily what I do with my family, what I do with my wife and kids, but what I do as far as my eating, my routine, and as far as that is concerned. It just makes it a very clear image. If you wanna see me do a video that's more of a day in the life of the family, I'd be happy to do that, but put it down below in the comment section. Now let me enjoy my coffee, please. You know who Granger Smith is? And I, I randomly opened up Instagram and saw that I had a message from him like a year and a half ago. And he was like, hey man, we should do something. Like, I love your work. So to give context, today is a pretty long filming day. So I'll probably be filming for eight, eight-ish hours or so. And uh, that's pretty mentally taxing. So the kind of workout that I was doing was geared to be a little bit more of a lactate response workout. So you may have noticed uh, I was going relatively heavy with longer eccentric moves and I was combining that with short, quick intervals. I wasn't trying to completely fry my central nervous system. I was trying to wake it up. Um, so I'd say I probably pushed myself to maybe 80-ish percent, which is exactly where I wanna be on a filming day. Um, 
A lot of times on a filming day, I'm gonna stay fasted, but today is a very long filming day, and I did a good amount of fasting yesterday. I don't like to fast back to back, so today's a perfect example to do a Mediterranean-style keto diet, eating relatively light, considering that I'm filming. Uh, one of the things I like to do before I film, I don't consume a lot of caffeine. I'll usually have my caffeine in the morning before my workout, and then I reserve additional caffeine for days that I'm filming. That way the additional caffeine is an extra surge, not just getting me to baseline. So I'm just gonna order a green tea, an organic uh, rev up green tea from Starbucks, go buy, pick that up, and then we'll get to some breakfast. Now, one of my least favorite times of the day, yet at the same time, one of my favorite times, ice cold shower time. Nice. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, man, we've had this for like, what, four and a half years now? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's about time to get a new one. No. <laughs> no. We're gonna keep it until it dies completely. <laughs> so, cold shower is done. You can see we've got some equipment set up here. So, we're gonna film half the day at this house, my home, and then we're gonna film the other half at the studio. But now, I wanna make one of my signature Mediterranean omelets. Now, just so that you guys know, this Mediterranean keto cookbook, uh, at the time of filming, we're a couple months out, but it's open for pre-order, so I'll put a link down below. But anyway, I'm gonna build something out of that book. I wanna explain something really quick. I actually filmed something uh, yesterday on eggs when I was at the grocery store, and I'm gonna keep this super quick. Pasture raised is what you wanna look for. Free range can be a little bit sketchy. Free range doesn't really mean anything because free range, all it means is that they have to have access to the outdoors, even if it's a hole that big. So people totally play on that. Pasture raised indicates that they have to have X amount of land per chicken uh, outdoors with some coops. So it's just more humane. But one thing I wanna show you, which you're gonna see in a second as I make this omelet, let me get a full, is look at the difference in egg yolk color. There's a lot of people that say that egg yolk color doesn't matter. Now take a look at this. Quite a difference there, right? So that has to do with what the chicken was eating. So that what gives it that color are carotenoids. So that's going to be uh, mean that they fed them a more well-rounded diet. They fed them things that, uh, tomatoes, things that are gonna give it color. Uh, and mainly we're looking for the carotenoids that are gonna be good for the eyes and high vitamin A content. So lutein, zeaxanthin, things like that. Huge difference. People say it doesn't matter, it does matter. Um, so I'm gonna put this aside, actually. Because I already cracked the egg, I'm gonna eat it. I'm not gonna waste it, all right? I don't think one of these eggs is gonna kill me, but here's what I am gonna do, is I'm gonna take one more of these eggs, and I'm going to add one additional egg. So I'm gonna do this. And if my dogs were here, I'd be giving them the white. <laughs> but what I'm doing is I'm adding one additional yolk because I want the vitamin A, I want the choline, especially the choline because I'm filming, which uh, choline is a precursor to acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter in the brain. So, okay, so I've got that. Go ahead and I'll whip that up. That's how you know you're fancy when you have two drawers with different kinds of silverware. Just mix that up real quick. So I don't even need much in the way of an egg. A little avocado oil. And I'm actually just gonna make this as a scramble to make it easy. So I've got two and a half eggs, really. Oysters, one of the richest sources of zinc that you can possibly find. Now these have olive oil in them. I don't want the extra oil right now, not at least from this oil, so I'm going to rinse them out. The reason I'm using goat cheese is it's a different protein. It's a different kind of casein protein. It's called A2 casein instead of A1 casein. So basically it breaks down different, but the big thing is goat cheese is high in MCTs, which is tremendous on keto, especially if I'm filming and I'm looking to get myself a little bit of a mental boost. So crumble that in, mix it up nice and easy. I don't even need much seasoning with this, to be frank. Let's put a little bit of cayenne, mix that up. It smells really good. I have these cool little uh, Kalamata olives. I get these from Thrive Market, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, but uh, you can get them in a can, but I, these are just super easy because I'm, uh, oops, I opened that in a weird way. Super easy and convenient because you can have them as a snack. And just, the nice thing is the olives are rich in the hydroxytyrosol, which basically is the antioxidant that you're trying to get out of olive oil. So I'm only gonna put maybe a third of the bag in. I'm a sucker for these. Also high in vitamin D, 
D2. It doesn't convert directly to vitamin D3 as easy, but mm. it's so good. It's pepper. That is Mediterranean to the max. We've got some oysters. We've got some good pasta raised eggs. We've got goat cheese. We've got Kalamata olives. But we're not done yet. A Mediterranean keto breakfast would not be complete without some good avocado. Just to round out the omega-3 profile, but also to round out the fiber profile, I actually take a little bit of ground flax. And I'll go ahead and I'll just put it right on the side and kind of mix it in. For me, this is all about getting the right profile. I might sometimes add that to a shake. It all depends on what I'm doing. And then occasionally I'll add a tiny bit of chia in there too. What this is gonna do, it's gonna help keep me satiated throughout the day. And believe it or not, it tastes really darn good with the eggs. You don't need much. Okay, just do that. And this is lava, which is like sour cream, except highly, highly cultured. See, look at all the cultures that are in there. Okay, it's a Mediterranean style of what's called kefir cheese. And it's very high fat, very low carb. I don't need much. That's a two tablespoon serving is gonna get me that. So I'm just gonna take probably roughly a tablespoon in. Now, along with my breakfast, what I might do is take a little bit in the way of some supplements. So in this case, I'm filming. So I want to be taking in some magnesium. So this is gonna make a big difference for me as far as feeling calm and relaxed. So I'm gonna take a full serving, which is four magnesium tops. And then whether I'm breaking a fast or I'm having breakfast, I usually use a little bit, tiny bit, like a tablespoon or a teaspoon or so of regular bee pollen. It gets me a few of the B vitamins that I need. I only need about a little more than a teaspoon. I just eat it straight up. You may think it's bee pollen, it has a bunch of carbs. No, it's got two grams of carbs. It's not gonna kick you out of keto. And the amount of vitamins and the amount of minerals that you get out of this is unbelievable. So there we have it. Nice, delicious Mediterranean keto breakfast. Mm. That is so good. But this is so high in monounsaturated fat, hardly any saturated fat. And the saturated fat that is coming in is coming mainly from steric acid, which is a relatively safe, good saturated fat. So I'm gonna eat this and then we're gonna get started and do some filming. Hi, Emma. Say hi, Dad. I spit up in Mom's phone speaker today. Oh, huh? hold on. Nope. Hey! I'm going in school right now. I'm going into school right now? Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do at school today? I just took this line. Yeah? You'll see me upstairs. <laughs> hi, Emma. <laughs> Yep. Bye bye, Daddy. I, I love you, buddy. Hey, can you give me smooches? Can you give me smooch? Nah. <laughs> so these glasses that I'm wearing are just to be able to block the blue light that's coming from the computer screen. These don't block blue light from anything else. I am definitely a nerd, biohacker, weirdo when it comes down to this stuff. And one thing that I have learned in working with athletes, working with the military, working with all kinds of, uh, you know, corporate wellness and corporate performance is that light manipulation is important. So say what you want, you can make fun of me, you can say that it's a weird agenda, whatever, but blocking blue light is important to me and it makes it so that I stay fresh for a long period of the day. Uh, additionally, people think I use a teleprompter all the time. <laughs> what I will do is when I'm preparing for a video, I will write out bullet points so that I don't make the video three hours long upon request of many of our viewers so that I can make sure that I stay on track and stay on my points. So that's it. So nope, there's no prompter anywhere to be found. The stuff that we talk about is stuff that I learned that I get excited about and therefore I have in my memory banks because I get excited about it. And I'm always learning new things and bringing it to you. Anyhow, now we're gonna get to some filming. So this is kind of what goes into this, right? Okay, I mean, we've got lots of studies, but now I'm looking at uh, diverse biological activities of dandelion. So interested specifically Mediterranean diet and the utilization of dandelion. But just to give you context, like this is what it goes. It's, it's diving into studies, diving into citations to understand and I don't wanna say prove my theories, but substantiate what I experiment on myself. My whole brand, everything that I do is about pursuing a result and then reinforcing it with science. And what I mean by that is trying something on my body, getting a desired outcome, and then going backwards and looking at the research to see why could this be working? Why could this, what is the mechanism of action? Why do I feel good when I eat X, Y, Z? And that's what I try to share with everybody else. I'm not just regurgitating science, I'm trying to apply things. But anyway, what I'll do typically is like in this case, 
I listen to binaural music, right? These are just binaural beats. Let's see if I can unplug the headphones so you can get an idea of what this sounds like. I mean, you have to listen to binaural with headphones, but. That's Thomas for you. So plug it into my headphones. You have to listen to binaural beats with headphones because it oscillates, you know, goes back and forth with different, different wavelengths in it. Anyway, long story short, I've done videos on it. So anyway, I'm gonna dive into some research and listen to some weird music. Rolling, speeding, rolling, and action. What makes the Mediterranean diet so unique isn't just one or two staple foods or the macronutrient ratios or anything like that. It comes down to just a coordinated effort, a symphony of different powerful anti-inflammatory things that work so well within the body. There's a reason that the Mediterranean region is considered a blue zone where people live for a long period of time. So I timed this perfectly. <laughs> I knew I was doing this video and it's a Thrive sponsored video. So I figured I'll have a Thrive Box show up. And then part of this video, I can take you through what I have in my Thrive Box, which I know it seems contrived and a little bit of a plug, but it's also real because it's what I would get in my Thrive Box. But there's also some cool stuff. And then I'm gonna cook up a quick lunch and we have to go to the office now. We filmed a bunch of content here. Now we gotta go film some backdrop stuff. I'm filming some content for the Zero Fasting app, which is pretty cool. Then we're gonna shoot some thumbnails and just get the whole day in the life. In case you didn't know, Thrive is an online membership-based grocery store, so I get a lot of my pantry staples and my keto items from them because it just makes it really easy to just get it delivered to my doorstep. And a lot of times it's cheaper than the grocery store, depending on where you shop. I'm in California, so groceries are expensive. All kinds of goodies here. This is garlic-infused avocado oil spray. Chosen Foods is one of the few brands that after that UC Davis study came out, just throwing a wrench in avocado oil, one of the few brands that was still rock solid. Um, Thrive Market carries a bunch, of, a bunch of chosen food brands. Oh, these, these are awesome. So when I'm on the go, little asparagus, uh, fermented, marinated asparagus. It's so perfect. Like right when I'm on the go and I just want to have some veggies, but I still want my, that's just perfect. Now these ones, I decided to get the ones with olive oil. Uh, I usually get them in water, but the Wild Planet ones, I know they use a high quality olive oil, so I'm okay with those. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> Blaze through this fast here. It's like coconut butter. It's like peanut butter, but maybe coconuts. Macadamia nut oil, which I always use. These are pepperoni crisps. Tepic has these chicken bits and tahini. Seaweed salad mix. Remember, I got a big box of these, or big bag of these at my Costco grocery haul, and Costco stopped carrying them. Now, Thrive has them. Seaweed, get my iodine in. And I'm just a big fan of flackers. These are flax crackers. These are so good. And last but not least, got some epic pork rinds. I'm a big fan of Epic and 4505. That's a fun little haul. Sweet. Okay, I'm gonna make some lunch and then we're gonna go to the office. So I have all this yummy stuff. I kinda wanna do something with at least some of it. Uh, so I'm gonna make a really quick light lunch. Now ordinarily, remember, I'm typically fasting on my filming days. So this is a little bit unconventional, but I wanna be able to demonstrate what I might have like for lunch or something simple like that. So in this case, I had some butcher box ground beef. I got these unbun grain-free tortillas. So these are water, blanched almond flour, pumpkin seed protein, coconut flour, psyllium husk, olive oil, coconut milk, flax meal, chia seed meal, apple cider vinegar, and salt. It doesn't get much cleaner than that. A couple slices of avocado. This is real life, right? This is like how you kind of meal prep and make it work, right? I've got some leftover ground beef, I've got some simple tortillas, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yeah, it's awesome. It's like bacon bits, but chicken. That is awesome. It's basically, I'm making myself a little taco. Now I am, I'm missing some greens here. So I'll probably have some asparagus in here, be perfect. Quick makeshift, on the go lunch. I feel like it needs a little bit of some sauce or something. You got this. Ooh, yeah. There we go. See, no real weird preservatives and stuff in there. That's why it's kind of liquidy. This is cool. Basically just made myself a buffalo beef taco. Yep. Put it so good. I'll wash it down with those. The only thing I would say is I could probably get away with having a little bit more fat with that meal, but I think it was okay. I still had probably, you know, 10 or so grams of fat coming in from the avocado. Then I had some fat coming in from the tortilla. I still had, it was 90% lean ground beef, so I still had a good amount of fat coming from the beef. Um, a little bit of fat coming from the chicken bits. See, 
it all adds up. Most people think with keto, oh, I need to add a bunch more fats. You're better off keeping your fats higher in the morning and then tapering them off as you go throughout the day. So now it's time to head to the office, do a little bit more filming to make sure that you keep it locked in for part two coming up tomorrow. Cool.